Perfect. Welcome back to the 80 Proof Podcast. Where Nick shakes his head in disagreement with whatever it is that I choose. I actually wasn't just... recording in time to get you shaking your head in disagreement. But I crowdsourced the choice of my alcohol. And what was chosen was blackberry tart ale. And Nick chose agave nectar ale. And I was like, of the two, I'm going to pick blackberry tart. And Nick is very upset. He picked the and wrong. Who's the one that chose the other one? Oh, uh, some asshole. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember his name. Some dick clearly chose, and it sprayed all over me. So clearly, I did pick the wrong one. Clearly, it's wrong with me. If only you listen to the person who's always right. Ooh. Well, I would, Just except me. you're a dick. That's actually a fair point. <laughs> I'm not even gonna argue against that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Nadi, are there any games from your history um, as a youngin that have particularly inspired you for anything, really, for artistic endeavor, for YouTube, for life, love, and the pursuit of more love? So you're asking me if I've played a video game that has caused me to change my path in my entire life to direct it towards something that would be more fruitful and enlightening? Well, possibly, but mostly in, in a more subtle way <laughs> than that. Okay. Um, but if there is you one what? that you thought of that did that shit, then I want to hear about it. <laughs> Games in, in sequence in which I play, they uh, are, I think they're probably influenced by things that I find very, um, that's distracting. Acting, so I'm gonna look over here. Um, <laughs> they're My they're very influenced. Down to fuck. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. I'm just I'm just commentating that my computer is like dying. So if if I like start freezing, it's because my computer's dead. That's fine. Right? Plug it in. As long as um, you're not dead. But if you were no. dead, I wouldn't be too upset. Stop interrupting his story. <laughs> yeah. You guys, sit down. There's a fire in the back. Um, the games that I do choose to play are always, oh, always. <laughs> always um, influenced by things that I pick out from different scenarios. Like if someone does a um, playthrough or um, a certain scenario in which I see a certain part of a video game that's very enlightening to me that I'm just like, I'm going to play that game. So your question would be invalid in a way I don't actually think choose a game that would actually bring some kind of um, feeling, heart feeling to my... Um, Gaming, but the one thing I do do for games is I don't look at anything about the game. If I do pick a game, I will struggle through it and finish it, and then have a huge opinion because I went with went in with only knowing the title of the game and not knowing anyone else's opinions about it. So, which is kind of different in a way that people would be like, oh, you should play this game because it has this and this and this and this and this. And they should be like, oh, um, oh, that's a cool picture. That's a nice title on that page. I'm going to pick that game and play it and then finish it because I'm that dedicated to playing that kind of game. I just so, want to point out that the way Nick is currently looking at the screen is the way of some sort of evil overlord plotting the demise of <laughs> I'm just, all I'm the just like being angry at the fact that I've He's got like, like a million tabs of everything open and it won't close. <laughs> Test manager. He's like as far back as possible, slanted and like, mmm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Skeletor. Anyway. <laughs> So you've never played a game that's gone the other way around? you never played a game that you've taken something from and brought it into your life? No. Um, you know, it's like the only games that I would probably would ever take opinion from is if someone's like, you have to play this game and try it, which is I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Or if I've seen someone... But the thing is, like, I don't like... Sometimes I don't even like watching other people's playthroughs, but if I do watch a full playthrough of someone playing a video game that I'm not, I don't actually even play that myself because it's just like, I don't like the ruining of the experience. He's going under the desk. <laughs> Nick, Sorry. you're distracting me. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, disappearing off the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, he's being really annoying. Ignore me. It's, ignore, it, just ignore. 
his audio is going to get cut out and he's going to start cussing like wildly, which you're probably going to do an over voice for. <laughs> I'm ignoring, I'm ignoring Nick. He's currently being ignored. You, you can't see it from your perspective. But, but it'll show up. Um, but I wanted to ask Nick the next question, which was the same question that I asked already. Which is, have you had a game that has inspired you? Um, <clears throat> or, or, you know, changed the way you look at things? Yeah. Most of them. Yeah, most uh, of them. But it's mostly in really subtle ways. A lot of them are like kind of obvious, but like when I play like RPGs were like a big revelation to me. Not so much because they're good games, and I kind of like don't like RPGs very yeah, much as actual it? games. We've had that argument. But like the current way people are doing RPGs of like having choices, like let's say like Mass Effect, Witcher mm -hmm. style RPGs where you have like morality choices those games like when I played them when I started playing them which was pretty recently I'm still pretty young I was like 16 between 14 and 16 when I first started playing those types of games and it really like kind of made me think about how I interact with people and like if I'm doing the right things when I choose things in my life mm -hmm. and then there's games like Bastion or something like that that's just like kind of abstract and like makes you look at the world in a kind of a different way. The way Bastion works, if people haven't noticed, it's like got know about it, it's like really a, a really mysterious world that you're in and you're being narrated and stuff. And like you're being told things as if you should know it already and things like that. It's like really subtle things that I took away from Bastion for some reason. I really like that game. I can't explain a lot of the things I like about it, but like it makes when I play Bastion. Okay, let me explain it this way: the way the narrator expects you to know things about the world, like he's like, "Oh, you're on the rippling walls," blah blah blah, at the beginning. It kind of makes me feel like I'm coming at this world from a different perspective. That I don't understand the world because I'm not from the world, and I try and look at our world like that, and I just like question things. I'm like. Okay, so if somebody was playing my life right now, what would they think that is? Things like that. It just like makes me think in a kind of different way that I wouldn't think if I didn't play games. That's mm -hmm. kind of my answer. Which is a good point where you were bringing a pet. Like, for example, if, if you ever played the Walking Dead game, um, one uh, choice in the game will have an outcome further on in the game. And it's a pretty. I think it's, it's a. Uh, if you take it in perspective of if you were to say something then obviously they're going to re react a different way and it does it does relate to real life and self um, because if you do say some, one thing you, you expect them to say something else to um, rebuttal your uh, situation that you just brought up right but I guess it, uh, Walking Dead is I guess the recent game that I'm still going through right now is uh, you make one choice and, and it's and it's going to change your entire gameplay and uh, same with in life, if you make one choice, it's going to change the way that people per uh, perceive you as a person or uh, look at you differently for that. So I guess if I was going to pick one game uh, previously, it would be Walking Dead for sure. That's a really good, a really good thought pattern. I, I wish more games would think about this sort of thing before they start mm -hmm. game design. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people think, of, I mean, game designers, they think about this. All of them think about this how will it affect our players, but they don't think about it nearly early enough. Mm -hmm. They think about it, you know, 90% of the way through game design, and they're like, how do we fix the game so that um, people won't be offended by it? And that's all they think about as far as what gamers will take away from it. Mm -hmm. When I wish people would think about The Walking Dead right when they start it, and then they were like, okay... So what do we want to come across in this game? What do we want to teach the player? What do we want to show as if this game were an art piece? As mm -hmm. if this game were a painting? And we wanted to give the player this particular emotion. Right. Um, I think that gaming would be a lot more potent form of storytelling if game designers thought about it in uh, a more broad perspective right but they don't P 
pain in my heart places. Mm -hmm. Hey, CD Projekt is going to be making a game that isn't The Witcher related soon. And I put all the hope in the world in them. Um, but as far as if there was one game for me that has affected me um, for my future, ooh, that's hard. Maybe Ocarina of Time. Maybe um, But is that a game that I can ask you? Is that a, that game is a complete classic and all around in itself, right? Like it's you can you can play that when you're a child and then play that now and it's still, it still kicks ass by far. Mm -hmm. Like there's, uh, and the thing is like they, there's not many faults. I mean, obviously we have uh, Nick who has his Link and his, his Zelda um, preferences, but it's, um, that game is one of those things that is quite amazing anytime at any age, right? Like it's, and and I think that they maybe they even developers like subliminally like thought of it as this could be for anyone. Like I could play it in twenty years from now and be like, this still is really good, right? Like it's yeah. one of those games. What like, about what Ocarina of Time? What's changed. That? What about Ocarina of Time? Was it specifically? It's, it's about choices. It's about you do a thing and that has ramifications into the future, like. You go back in mm. time, you make a small change, you go back into the future, and that change just has long-reaching effects. And this is more effective if I say, um, um, not Ocarina of Time, but the other N64 game that I'm for some reason remember forgetting the name of, uh, Masks, like, you know. Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask, that's the name of it. Where that game. you go back in time and you make a small choice that you then go forward in time and it has made a lasting difference. Um, and that sort of thought pattern has been sort of influential to me. And there's been a lot of games that do a similar thing for me. Um, yeah. Any game, like old school Final Fantasy games or any like legitimately old RPG, you sort of you make a progression um, where you make decisions as you go along and your character feels like you and any game where you sort of make morally questionable decisions to uh, achieve an objective Mass Effect is an example mm. of a series where that's a thing but there are a number of series that do similar things to you that way you have to make choices and you have to stick with those choices um, for me, the most, like, defining part of, like, story and games is the fact that you can actually interact with it. So, like, instead of, like, a movie or a book where y y there's a character and you have to, like, feel something towards the character and then something happens to the character and you're like, oh, no, I feel bad for this character. In a game, something's happening to you and you're like, oh, shit, I'm going to die, right? And I feel like, I feel like that's what makes gaming have such an impact, like the, the storytelling especially, is that you're not feeling something towards something, you are experiencing it, and you're not trying to relate to somebody else on a screen, mm -hmm. you are experiencing it. And that's why I think like non, like morality and things and non-linear gameplay kind of works really well and it's coming out in a big way at the moment. I think this, this speaks really well towards um, sort of sandbox gameplay versus um, scripted gameplay. Right. We're like, scripted gameplay, it will show you an experience. And this is sort of what Bioshock was. Bioshock Infinite was a really well done scripted gameplay experience. And I know that Naughty has some experience with Bioshock. Did you, have yeah. you finished that already and you just... I have not. I actually have um, six videos to edit, so but they're pretty pretty br bloody long, for sure. I think I'm like I just I today right before this happened, I think got the 17th video up there, 17th episode of it, and uh, I have a lot more to go. I'm assuming so. Look forward but, to that on Naughty Shell. But um, yeah. <laughs> the the gameplay experience in that was 
I, I hope this isn't a spoiler. I really do. I'm going to go ahead and say it, regardless. It's more of a scripted experience. It's not yeah. a decided experience. You yeah. don't get to choose how things go in that game. That game just chooses how it goes because it's a very um, constricted storyline. It can't go a bunch of different ways due to the nature of the story itself. Mm -hmm. It's about the best example of how that can be done. But I still think I prefer an experience where I get to choose what happens to me because the consequences are more real. Uh, good examples of how you can choose the way the story goes and yet it's still... Uh, Bio uh, not Bioshock. Mass Effect 2 is a good example of you get to pick how things turn out and because of that the um, repercussions are all entirely yours and you feel them more. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a more, po more potent experience because of that. Uh, can you come up with anything else? Anybody that's not me? I don't think that like... Um non like scripted is less powerful than non scripted i i let's say linear mm -hmm. i feel it's just like how well they make you feel like you're in a world because like <clears throat> a lot of games nowadays especially like uh, modern running through shooters the reason that their scriptedness is bad is because they're obviously scripted and stuff yeah. so like you can have like a really tight focused <clears throat> experience and everyone's going to experience the same thing in a game like have it being really straightforward and linear but if you have like enough wiggle room so that like you can explore and stuff you still feel like you're in the world it's just how it's how well you can get immersed into it because that's like the main thing for me with gaming when they offer you a world is that you can get immersed to it into a way that you can't with like a movie because like let's say Skyrim you're walking around this giant world and you're just like oh wow look at all this stuff and it could be scripted essentially as long as like they made it like a really open path let's say that's kind of a shit example no but it the, th the well thing no, is like it's a sandbox right Zelda the, the storyline is still extremely scripted they don't let you stray they don't let you make any actual choices mm -hmm. as far as the actual storyline goes they know where you begin and they know exactly where you're going to end so, any flexibility in there is entirely made up fake flexibility. And in that way, it's a really good example for why, um, for, for the way in which you can take a storyline and make it feel like you have flexibility even when you actually don't. And so basically, just because they make you feel like it's a sandbox in that storyline doesn't mean it's actually a sandbox. You still know like, exactly where you're going. You still have actually no choice. And so, like, inversely, you can have um, a really deep storyline in a situation in which you actually don't have much choice. So choice is not directly tied to the diversity of story. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, I mean, like, there's some, like, as you're talking about, like, shooters and stuff, some people like to be able to come to a video game where they're, they are mindless. They don't like those, like, that's where it's, like, you choose your category of people that you want, are you going to actually play your game. I mean, there are some people that would be like, oh, I wish they could get so far outside the boundary of what the game is designed, and they're like, I wish I could go further, and then people do make those kind of games. And then uh, I think some people like want to play bl games that blow your mind. Like, like oh, I wonder if I can do this. And it's like, oh my gosh, I can. Like, it could be a simple concept, but it's like they thought of that one little thing that could make it so more enlightening for that kind of player for that situation, right? So, but that's the whole boundary of different games and different scenarios in which they like, uh, appeal to different types of gamers. Yeah. But, I like, I don't like um, modern military first person shooters and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, just because like it just generally doesn't appeal to me, I think it's too flashy and crap. Mm -hmm. But I can totally uh, like sit back and play a Mario game or a Mega Man game, and that's a straight yeah. line, and like really like it. Yeah. The thing about a, a loose story 
if you have to account for every decision that the player can make, you can't make a tight story. Like, 